Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive, Daniel here. All right, and welcome back to my continuing deep dive coverage of Four Against Darkness. And today we're gonna to take a look at the Knight of Destiny. So this was a, or this is a small supplement that I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on. I'm still not going to, this is going to be a relatively brief video. But uh, I was just going to kind of men mention it in passing and, and give it give it a little bit of time. But I've ended up really falling in love with this expansion just because it's so unique. And so far from the things that I have encountered in Four Against Darkness, this has offered up the most different experience. Uh, last time I mentioned the fact that I think this game benefits from journaling your quests, journaling your adventures, connecting the dots with the narrative that you create while you are playing. And if anything, the Knight of Destiny is a story generating supplement. It is a story generating thing in a book. So this is that the uh, Knight of Destiny is an Arthurian adventure for a single character, a questing paladin. Using the Four Against Darkness rules, your character can also hire retainers along the way, enlisting men-at-arms, merchants, and other travelers to help him in his quest for the Grail. The kingdom is in decay. Lancelot has left and King Arthur has fallen ill. Traitor knights, led by Morgana and her unholy child Mordred, have rebelled. Only the Grail can heal Arthur and end the evil. But it is a race against time. The traitors are hunting paladins to stop the quest. If the grail is not found in time, all will be lost to darkness. This adventure requires no mapping. It includes rules for paladins, Arthurian magic items, and random tables to generate inns, encounters, quests, and even the names of characters met. This is a really neat expansion, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. One of the things that I like about it the most is I can take this with me anywhere because all you need to play this adventure is this book and this special character sheet that you can print out. So last week I was taking this to work with me in my backpack. I mean, it's such a small little expansion and for being so small, it really does offer up a lot of fun. So as you can tell, the character sheet is quite a bit different in this expansion. You are playing a paladin. Right now I am playing Sir Danalon and you come automatically armed with a, with a weapon, with a sword, a slashing weapon, a heavy armor, and a shield. Your paladin starts at level three, so he has nine life points. Eventually, you can get up to level five in this adventure, and then you can learn two special skills, special paladin skills called Holy Avenger and Divine Smite. You can hire retainers. Right now, I have Leofberg is a uh, brute, and Attic is a brute and they have their own stats. The When you have retainers, they fight the minions for you. There are also knight challenges where you fight knights that are kind of like bosses and mini bosses, but because of your knightly code and chivalry and all of that, you and your honor, you cannot have your minions fight the knight challenges for you. You have to face them yourself. And then you get a nice little chart down here for your defense rolls and attack rolls. And this just tells you flat out what, if, what you are armed with or what you have for as far as armor and your bonus that you get to your rolls and your to hit or to defend rolls. So a nice little handy chart down here. Um, up here you have a thing called piety points. So there are a few different stats that you have to keep track of that are kind of like timers. And let's see here, uh, you have pity points. Uh, this is the level of your paladin's holiness. You have rebellion level. So as you are playing, the rebellion level is going to go up. And if it ever gets to five, you have lost this adventure. And certain things will trigger the rebellion level to go up. You have to keep track of a number of bosses slain. Bosses are the leading traitors. As bosses are killed, their ability to attack is weakened. Uh, Use as a modifier on the traitor's attack table. And then uh, completed side quests. So there are side quests. And at the end of the game, you win if, you're, if you find the Grail and return it to Camelot. You lose if your Paladin dies or the Rebellion level reaches to 5. You also collect rumors. Rumors are kind of like clues. So collecting rumors is crucial to success. Spending three rumors at a time changes the result on the encounter table. Once spent, rumors cannot be reused. So you are playing a paladin. There is no mapping in this game. 
it is all done by rolling on tables and then keeping track of what you have rolled. And so far, this is my little adventure that I have been going on. And like I said, it's so much of a journaling experience, this supplement, that at the end of the supplement here, they actually include an example that is a walkthrough and a kind of how you would want to write your own journal quest. So this is the tale of Sir Lionel, a walkthrough. Accepting the great quest, Sir Lionel starts out from Camelot full of hope. Not long into his journey, he is met by another knight guarding a bridge who challenges, challenges him to a fight if he wants to pass. The knight, Sir Meligerance, um, takes his position, attacking first. Meligerance misses with his swing. So as you can see, you can get really involved in the detail that you want to write. But basically, each time you roll a d6 or 2d6 to determine what happens, that is another point in the story. And what you are basically doing is you are basically rolling on this basic journey table. So let's uh, let's take a turn here. Let's just see what happens. So, so far, my adventure, I have not kept a lot of notes. Basically, I've just been playing on breaks at my work. But so far I have, this is the adventures of Sir Danelon. Um, I left from Camelot, a knight issued a challenge and that was Sir Gangelane. So the uh, one of the neat things about this supplement here is it creates, it has name generations, name generation tables. So you can randomly generate a name for an N. So you could have like the, the red griffin, the hungry horse, the golden goblets, the three oaks, things like that. You have random name generator for retainers. So these are for your retainers that you're going to hire. You have a random name generator for the knights that you will meet. So you will meet Sir Bowers or Sir Damus or Sir Seferi or Sir Milligrants, Sir Morian. So pretty cool. Um, a lot of neat charts in this game. So um, what have I done so far? Yes, I've, I've challenged this knight. This knight uh, basically challenged me to a duel in order to prove myself. I said that I was worthy of the quest for the Holy Grail. I beat the knight and then I decided to go and visit a shrine. But along the shrine, uh, something happened. I got lost, but I finally found the shrine. Um, I went to an inn. It was called the Three Arrows, but I was turned away. I had to fight some minions at nighttime. It was uh, I, at the, fight, the fairy fire. I managed to beat that. I went back to an inn, the Golden Kings. I hired two retainers, and that's kind of where I am now. So I'm, I'm just about ready to leave the Golden Kings. The Golden Kings was the name of that particular uh, inn, and I'm going to see what happens. So a lot of this is going out, going on on a little adventure, and then coming back to an inn. You're constantly stumbling on inns. I think it's kind of funny in this adventure. There's basically, it's like there's an inn every other hundred feet in this. <laughs> in this land but i'm leaving the end so what i would do is i would roll on the journey table so that is a d6 a two okay so i'll roll on the end table so i can either roll on the end table or bypass and roll on the journey table again well i've just left an end i'm not going to go back to an end every time you go to an end it does cost 10 gold to stay at that end and you want to keep track of your gold your gold changes a lot in this adventure um, and if you stay at an inn, then you have to roll to see what happens to your knight at that inn. Um, you can go up to an eight, so there are ways to augment this roll to get better and higher results. Once you go to an inn, then you have the option of doing certain things at the inn. You can heal lost life points, you can re-employ existing retainers. Every time you go to an inn, you have to repay five gold pieces for each retainer that you have. You can determine if there are any new retainers available and you want to roll on this table here that tells you who is available to hire to help you. You can purchase goods, you can find rumors, and you can also, if you have merchant retainers, uh, the merchants might have special things to sell you. So let's continue on our journey and roll on the journey table again. That two, okay, so we we'll keep going. It's a long path we're trudging down. Jesus Christ, what's with these twos? <laughs> Let's try a different D6. <laughs> okay, a one. So we are at a crossroads. We can roll on the end table or the encounter table. 
we get to choose what to use. Okay, I don't want to go back to an inner, so I'm going to roll on the encounter table. So here we have our encounter table, and we're going to roll 2d6. What do you think? Any twos here? Nope. Okay, so one and a three. So that is four. We found a village, a village of plague and death. You can bypass it or help. If you help make two saves versus level three, if both fail, your paladin dies of the plague. If any pass, roll for a PD point. Okay, so let's try to help. I am a knight. I am questing. I need to do good. So we need to have two saves of, uh, of, of le at level three. So we need to get three up. And okay, so one of, uh, one of them passes. So we're good. We help out with the plague. And now we can roll for a PD point. To roll for a PD point, you basically have to, it's kind of like rolling for an XP. Uh, let's see here, where was that? You have to roll a D6, and if it is um, higher than, let's see, PD test, roll a D6. If the result is equal to or lower than your current number of PD points, then the PD test is passed. Okay, so I have one point, so I need to roll a one. So what does this whole thing say? Uh, PD points are acquired through acts of goodness. If the game instructs you to roll for a PD point, roll a D6. If more than the current number of PD points, uh, that's right, that's right. So we're gaining a PD, so we do a different type of attack or a different type of roll. If more than the current number of points, then add one to your total. If you're testing, then you have to roll below. That makes sense. So right now I have um, one PD. So let's see if I get another one. I need to get uh, more than a one. So I, if, as long as I roll a two or higher. Okay, um, the dice are not in my favor on this video. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and switch those out for some luckier D6s. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, so we, we rescued that village from the plague for nothing, but that's fine. That's what knights do. So we are going to continue on our way here. We have a four. We are rolling on the encounter table again. All right, so we've got a 10 there. Let's see here, 10. A village of poverty and fam famine. You can bypass it or help. If you help, donate at least 50 gold in value. Roll for a PD point. I only have 44 gold, so I can't help this village in poverty. So we would continue on our way. Let's roll on the journey table. A four. Roll on the encounter table. Okay. And we have a six. So six uh, minions. Roll a d6. On a one to four, we fight the day minions. Or um, table six. On a five to six, we fight the nighttime minions. So you do have a lantern in this game, like regular four against darkness. But if you face off against minions during the day, you don't need to worry about using your lantern. You only have to use your lantern when it says it's nighttime. So let's see what kind of minions. Three, so that's daytime minions. So we're gonna roll on table six to see what kind of minions we're facing. And we are facing four D6 angry peasants. They are level two. They have, we have one roll on the treasure. They're at morale minus two. If you give them the unicorn horn, I do not have the unicorn horn, so I can't give them that. So I would have to face off against these angry peasants. And because I have two retainers, the retainers are going to fight this battle for me, which that is kind of cool. And there's also different things. You can get challenged by different knights there. You can be attacked by traitors. The pilgrimage table is really cool. So there are times where you need to go on a pilgrimage to a shrine in order to regain some of your holiness. And you really want to roll a six. Everything you roll that isn't ex that isn't a six, your next roll is hampered. Your next roll, you have a penalty to it. So it's harder and harder to reach your shrine, to reach the end of your pilgrimage journey. If you ever get to a one, then the journey takes too long, and that's when you might run into problems where the rebellion level raises, pushing you towards a game loss condition. So I really like that table a lot. It's really fun. Then you have your nighttime minions. You can go on different side quests, going up against a giant, a dragon, the green knight. Cannot wait to see that movie. Uh, the questing beast, three blind old hags, or Lamora's the wizard. There is a test of piety. You might have different outcomes there. Uh, when you return to Camelot, if Lancelot has returned, modify So somehow you can get Lancelot to return to Camelot. I have no idea how to do that. The Castle Perilous table. 
another kind of side quest table. Then you have your treasure table, your rare items that you can find, um, the things that you can buy, which are also listed on your character sheet here that you can download, and then your name generator. And so that's really what you're doing. It's a really fast paced supplement because you're not drawing a map, you're not really drawing anything. You're basically rolling on this 1d6 table and then consulting other tables, trying to figure out how to get through this quest to get the grail and return to Camelot. Really fun. It offers up a nice little chunk of an adventure in a super, super portable fashion that is just super easy to bring out when you have five or 10 minutes to have a nice little adventure. And I would imagine that the whole thing would probably take around 45 minutes to an hour to go through. And you could probably get, I don't know, a handful of plays out of this before you saw everything. So I do really recommend this supplement. It surprised me. This was actually one of the first supplements I ever bought. I think I bought this when I originally bought Four Against Darkness a few years ago. And I never really looked at it because the, the fact that it didn't use a map I was kind of into Four Against Darkness and the D100 dungeon style games because I was getting back into drawing dungeons. And so this one kind of disappointed me a little bit that, that there wasn't a map involved. And also I'm not the biggest fan of Arthurian legend, but this takes enough liberties with the, with the original lore and legend that I think it's, it is, I find it a little more interesting. But yeah, highly recommended, The Night of Destiny. And who was that written by? Uh, Victor Harmus or Jarmus. And, and, and edited by Andrea. Playtesters. Uh, there's not a lot of art. I don't think there's any art actually, is there? A couple little, uh, couple little pieces of art there. Nothing major. This probably has the least amount of art that I've seen in a 4AD. Here we have some nice wood carvings. I don't know if those are Dore or not. I don't think so. Cover painting, uh, so the cover painting was done by um, Andrea. And uh, reference materials, so yeah. Pretty interesting, highly recommend this. It is a lot of fun if you're looking for something different. And all you need really to play is a basic understanding of the rules so you could have a nice little time with just these two books, a sheet of paper, a pencil, and a couple D6. So, all right, guys, well, I hope you enjoy this detailed look at the Night of Destiny, and we will talk to you later. Bye bye.